This is the legacy of war. A casualty who, with many others like him, may eventually come under your care. The duties of an air orderly demand a high standard of character, integrity and technical ability. He or she must be fully competent to assess and minister to all the needs of casualties during transit by air and also be fully aware of the arrangements made for their comfort and well-being while they're being evacuated by the Royal Air Force. Of the types of aircraft used for this purpose, the Dakota is the most common. It's easily adaptable for carrying all kinds of freight on the outward journey and for the evacuation of casualties. Using this type of rack equipment, it will carry 18 stretcher cases, nine on each side arranged in tiers of three, and up to six walking wounded. In aircraft where the webbing stretcher gear has replaced the metal racks, 20 stretcher cases in five tiers of four can be carried. The accommodation for the walking wounded is not affected. The Anson can be used for smaller lifts of freight and casualties. This one, the Mark 10, will take three stretcher cases, the special loading door being located on the starboard side. The Mark 12 has fittings for three stretcher cases, seats for two walking wounded, and space for one orderly. The loading door this time is on the port side. The medical equipment for air orderlies is contained in two panniers, a first aid box and an air oxygen outfit. Let's examine pannier number one first. The top tray contains two pairs of bed socks, a supply of paper bags for air sickness, a battery operated headlamp with two spare batteries, and two oxygen masks fitted with long leads for plugging into the aircraft system. There's also a towel, an overall, and a knife. In the lower compartment, there are a hot water bottle, four rubber earrings, two kidney bowls, two basins, a bedpan, and two urine bottles. In the first aid box, there are a couple of sling bandages, a waterproof sheet, and a supply of surgical dressings and drugs. Scissors and forceps are contained in this metal case. Note particularly these four metal boxes each containing five ampules of morphia. You may be instructed by the medical officer at the field of implaining to use morphia during the trip, or in cases of extreme pain, you'll have to decide for yourself. In pannier number two, six flasks are provided for carrying tea, or in tropical climates, lime juice. The metal container holds sandwiches. Feeding mugs with rubber attachment and ordinary drinking mugs complete the canteen stores. In addition, sweets, chocolates and cigarettes are issued with the sandwiches as extra comforts. The oxygen outfit is an essential part of your equipment. The main components are the cylinder, a pressure gauge which is secured by a wing nut, a length of rubber tubing to which is attached a clamp, and a flow meter. The flow meter controls the mixture of oxygen and air supplying the mask attached to the other end of the tube. When making it ready for use, screw the gauge up tight with the key. See that this bayonet fitting on the Arcus unit makes a good airtight connection. And make sure that the flow meter is adjusted to the stipulated 80% of oxygen. The tap attached to the valve should be examined from time to time. The mask with adjustable head straps has a rubber bag attached 
which acts as a reservoir from which the patient breathes. This will be demonstrated in action later on the aircraft. 